Could I have everybody please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mayor Racy. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Porter. Here. Councilman Miller. Present. Councilman Webster. Here. Councilman Dowd. Here. Councilwoman Skiff. Here. Councilman Wagner. Here. A quorum is present. Okay. I wanted to start tonight's meeting. We're just going to take a moment of silence to remember the loss of life at Hickory Hollow this, this weekend um, with the uh, tragedy that happened there. So if we could just take a moment of uh, silence. Thank you. Thank you. Item one, approve the agenda. Move to approve. Support. I have one thing that I'd like to uh, to change on that um, is to uh, move 6D to the top, the approve the budget amendment. That's the only one? Okay. Okay. Yeah. There was a motion. You need to follow up with that motion. Hmm? You need to call for the A's and Motion the to move six with, with D to the beginning of the agenda. Actually, you can't do that yet because you have a motion on the floor. Follow yeah. through on the motion on the floor, so at which point make another or? motion to amend the agenda. Okay. So we got to vote it down to make the change? You can vote to approve it, but then make another motion to amend the okay. agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now you make a motion to amend the agenda to move 6D. A motion to uh, amend the agenda, move 6D to the uh, top of the agenda. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thanks. Item 6D, under general items for consideration, approve budget amendment 219.5. Move to approve. Support. Any questions on that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item three, bid awards. Approve the bid award for the removal and replacement of kitchen countertops at the Wayne Fire Department to be paid from the Community Development Block Grant budget. Approval subject to written contract acceptable by both the city and the vendor. Um, the bidders are in the amounts Granite and Marble Express, Wayne, Michigan, $5,875. Regal from Fraser, Michigan, $6,900. West Branch from Belleville, Michigan, $16,116. Mando from Mount Clemens, Michigan, $8,800. And SBD Commercial from Jackson, Michigan, $12,950. Mr. Council. Motion to approve the low bid, Granite Marble and Express for Wayne, Michigan. Second. Any questions? Could we please have um, Ms. Going uh, to the uh, microphone for some questions then? <coughs> this matter. Good evening. Thank you, Ms. Going. A um, couple questions here, and I think there's concerns uh, that have been raised in the community regarding uh, the material used uh, in this um, uh, uh, request here. Um, we had a meeting last November 30, if you recall. Uh, regarding the of the of these funds, and it was an educational experience for me in learning more about the D, D B G, C D B G, excuse me, uh, and 
at that meeting, you provided me with a map showing what the low and moderate income areas were in the community. Quite frankly, it was a large portion of our community if you t take out the Ford plant. And then also you provided me with a three, four pages of all the sort of um, applications that we can utilize this funding for in the community. While I took a visit today to the fire department, I went and personally went and looked at what the needs were there. Um, and it's a matter of opinion. Do they actually need to be replaced? Say, for example, the counters. I can understand the, uh, the garage door openers. There is eight doors. Seven of them need to be replaced. How many doors do we actually need to be operating? Comes to my mind as well. You know, for the vehicles to safely exit out <coughs> efficiently. My point being made, and I'm going to vote yes on this. Oh, first of all, I want to ask. This is remaining money from the previous year, correct? This is 2017 money. Okay. So, uh, and how much will we have left over after this? Uh, you, know, you know, I'm not going to say a number because these bids came in lower than we thought they actually would. Yes. I, I believe it's roughly 20000 It was roughly 20000 but I can give you an exact number. And we'll have left over after if this is approved tonight? That is correct. Okay. Um, and we have to what time to get rid of? Uh, to uh, we have to the end of June now. The county did give us an extension. Okay. Um, so we do have time to spend the rest of the money, which we did not think we would, but we will have now. Okay. You know, I've been getting a lot of uh, feedback from the community that, you know, our priorities here. And when all this money is being supposed to be spent on um, low, moderate income areas for to improve the quality and safety of these residents, they're finding it difficult to digest what we're approving for it tonight. So uh, what I'm asking is that going forward, that we start focusing more on just those two, is the, improving the quality of their life and also the safety. And it, it affects them more directly than what we are approving for tonight. Oh. Um, that's, that's, that's basically what I'm going to convey to you this evening in that manner. I know we've had that discussion. It's a little frustrating when we're going ahead and proving these uh, 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 expenditures uh, from these uh, funds. And we're not, as residents, directly seeing the physical impact, visual impact of those things done and improving our quality of life here. So um, with that, that's all I had to want to convey to you tonight. OK, well, if I may, I, I appreciate your comments. So I appreciate you being honest. Uh, these are activities that are allowable. And with the short amount of time that we were supposed to have had, uh, it was a good expense of the money in the sense that they were items that were needed. Now, you want to know how many doors need to be operating out of the eight? All eight doors need to be operating. If we don't use the CBDG money to buy the doors, which we have available to us, and it's an allowable expense under the, the HUD guidelines, it's going to come out of the general fund, another expense that would not be needed. So there is an impact to the community in the sense that that money that's being utilized for the garage doors and the countertops is not coming out of the general fund that's going to cut into maybe DPW's budget or another budget. Um, I will tell you, uh, you won't have to worry, unfortunately, anymore about how these dollars are being allocated because we're not going to be getting them anymore. Uh, there's a proposed, I shouldn't say we're not, we probably will not be getting CBDG money after uh, 19. The county has proposed, and we held a meeting here the other night, uh, that they're going to change how they allocate the dollars to the communities. Essentially, all we will be receiving, if it passes, is $20,000 a year. That is it. We will have the opportunity, which is this is the good part for the city of Wayne. We have an opportunity to put an RFP in for maybe a new road project or uh, some other type of infrastructure project that might be three or $400,000. Right now, all we get pretty much every year is an average $120,000 a year for a couple of activities. Now, with the help of the city manager, myself, and our administrative team, we have an opportunity to take some of the bigger priorities that would come out of the general fund in the allowable areas and apply for CBDG block grant money that we have never been allowed to apply for. So we definitely will keep, take your comments into consideration when we do the RFP. Um, I would appreciate your feedback. If there are projects that you know of, uh, Councilman, that are in allowable areas, I'd like to hear your ideas because, uh, I mean, you're all the ones, you're the ones that are going to be voting on it, and we need to hear what you uh, feel are priorities as well as the administration. Would so. those all be based on the list of um, what is applicable to previously, what, to previously, the list of um, 
of what we can apply those uh, RFPs for in the future? Will they be differently? Will they be we can apply for any activity that is allowable within the low to moderate area income areas, those maps that I gave yeah. you. Yeah. Any of those projects, and there's certain criteria on those too, so it's not like if you say you want to build a library, okay, we can build a library. There's certain guidelines with each one of the activities, like public service. Uh, there's certain activities that can take place within that category. So I would have to get things cleared through Terry Carroll at the county to see if they're allowable. But um, I, anything that you're thinking of, I would appreciate if you would ask me, and I'd be happy to check to see if it's And that would be up. great. I'd appreciate if you would forward that information to us as soon as possible once I, you receive it. Yeah, you, you'd so have to tell we me can what start. projects you're thinking first before I could send you information. Okay. I need that from you so I can do the research. Gotcha. Okay. okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. Anything else? Not at this time. Laurie, I, I just want to, you, you can stay because we can go back and forth for a second. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, because you were at the meeting, I was. I'm on the board with with that. So, the hundred the hundred thousand dollars is that every five years you'll have an opportunity to get that above a hundred thousand dollars. You get twenty thousand a year, so that's a hundred. You're guaranteed two hundred thousand dollars every five years. Hundred thousand. You can bank. Well, you have you have your, your yeah you have the hundred plus the other hundred because they said you will get at least a hundred thousand dollars every five years every five years so it'll go down to two hundred thousand dollars when we were getting five hundred thousand dollars plus no we were only getting past. we were only getting 120 no but i'm saying over a five-year period it would oh, be five, over yes okay i see what you're saying so exactly over, that five-year period is shrunk down into hundred thousand but if we're successful with our rfps we wind up with more we end up with way more exactly so mayor o, or i'm sorry mayor racy then i may ask that uh which the information you provided here that you can convey that to the complete council through email so we can yeah have we we it's it, it's got to be approved by the county it's okay. it's up to the county to do this it's out of the we're an advisory board the county is taking over this and it'll be the county is going to dictate what's going to happen here shortly and we'll know the the uh, if I may the uh, commission will be taking this matter up probably in the first of March and uh, holding a public hearing perhaps or they'll get feedback from the communities at that meeting uh, and then they would vote on the item so I can let you all know uh, when that is because the more voices the better yeah and all the communities and people have been coming to 32 communities have been coming to these meetings yeah we had a full house here the other night yeah and they had three three nights in a row they held melding public hearings mm -hmm. as required by law Jeremy, did you have anything you wanted to add to anything? No, nope, I was just, okay. just here for questions. Okay. Any other council members have anything that they wanted to ask? Yep. Yeah. I'm just making sure. Mr. Blackwell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Ms. Gowen mentioned something about public service. And not only does the fire department come to mind, but our police department, because they provide public service. Can those funds be spent on our police department, the, the building? No, it cannot. Uh, the police department is not located within the low to moderate income area, and the police department is not specifically called out in HUD as a fire station is. Uh, the one challenge we even face in the fire department is if we wanted to purchase something to go on the rescue, we could not do that because the rescue does not stay at the station. It goes into other areas. So we can't determine how much of the rescue spends time in the low to moderate uh, income area. So we can't do building improvements at the police station. It is not in a, it's not in the low to moderate area. <coughs> Mayor Racy, <coughs> yes, to, to the chair. Uh, can you explain and explore a little bit for the residents regarding because um, Ordinance officer has been a topic for us. We're trying to find funding for that. Also, inspection. Is, it, it, explain to the audience why we're not able to use uh, those fundings for those, or are we? Uh, we actually are. Okay. Um, we, we spend about $20,000 a year on code enforcement, and how that works is uh, Mr. Byton prepares a list based on the inspections out of the BSNA system. And we filter the list to addresses that are located specifically within those areas. And we are allowed to charge back time for the code enforcement. We're also allowed to charge if the code enforcement officer has to go to court. Uh, we can charge off there's time that could be figured into that. Uh, it's 
all part of the CBDG reimbursement. So it has to be in those areas, and it is tracked and reported. Okay, thank you. Mr. Osborne, did you have a question? Thank you for remembering my name. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, when we get to uh, use these monies, uh, I, I would appreciate if some of these department heads would uh, appear before uh, you, the council, the public, and say, we are in distress. We need new granite uh, tops and, and have a little explanation. I am glad, glad we have one council person that took the opportunity to walk over there and take a look, see for himself. Myself, I, it was a last minute opportunity. In regards to the doors, yes, we have eight doors. But at no time have I heard our, our chief and Deputy Chief Snyder approach here and ask you for any money because uh, we have some distressed doors that are not working. Just like this camera system and microphone system, it's not working very good and people report it to you. So I wish that uh, we'd know what is the life expectancy of these doors that you're getting it from? Uh, did they just fall down today, tomorrow? Uh, like somebody else said, uh, the, the way they dish out the money is they can't give it to the police department. But our police department is in uh, more dire need of money than all of our fire department epoxy floors, granite floors. Pretty soon we'll be adding lush beds over there. So I just wish we'd take a chance, ask the people who want all these doors finished, have them send a report to you, the city manager, and say, we have some distressed doors, they need to be repaired, and it would cost us X amount of dollars. Because we can spend some of our other dollars in some distressed areas, I can find them for you too, and uh, they would make our uh, dis distressed, low-income areas a lot more prominent. Okay? Thank you very much. Chair. Through the chair. Um, thank you, Mr. Osborne. I, I can certainly appreciate that. Uh, just, so you're, just so you're aware, they do bring these things to my attention constantly. Uh, the uh, departments for years have not had capital uh, improvement plans. They weren't, there was no money there to do that. However, what we try to do is when they do need items during budget sessions, we do get a list each year of things they need. We are in budget sessions right now, and the court brought to our attention a lot of capital needs that they need on their department. Doors are failing and things like that. Um, and, and let me speak to the, to the grant side of it. Um, we're trying to be as proactive as we can, more than reactive. We're just we're still bailing ourselves out of years of neglect, unfortunately. And when we use grant funds, for instance, in the fire department for a new ambulance, that allows me to release money over in the general fund when there's not grants available for the police department to buy a new car, a new vehicle, new equipment, and things like that. So it's money we're not taking out of the general fund when we buy that new ambulance for the grants, through the grants. And so we try to shift and, and make sure that every department is trying to get a, um, you know, a chance to uh, improve some of their their needs. Um, unfortunately, at the federal level, I'm glad we have a federal liaison in the back here. Um, there's not a lot of police grants out there right now. Um, the cops programs have been shut down. They're fighting over sanctuary cities. Um, when the government shut down, that didn't help. Technology grants are very hard to come by. We were lucky to get the burn grant recently, the eighty one thousand uh, dollars for the police department. Um, for some reason, uh, when I had asked congressional members and Senate members, you know, what's, why is there more for fire, not for police? Why is it more balanced? They said, well, because we have a lot more police departments in the country than we have fire departments. We're able to, uh, you know, allow more money. And so it's the same thing with the COPS grant. And, the, and I'm sorry to go on, but the SAFER grant, the reason they've been able to supply SAFER funds uh, and allow us to have um, firefighters in the past, now that formula is changing, is because there's less police department or fire departments than there are police departments. So that's why when we get a COPS grant, they'll pay for it for maybe one year, but then we are responsible for keeping that person. So it's really um, a very uh, frustrating process, to be honest with you. 
uh, police departments all over the country. The president said he was going to invest in our police and fire. It's not happening. And we need Congress to open up and start doing some of those things. So, um, but just to say, we're being as proactive as possible. And uh, these, these garage door openers, they were brought to my, my attention. Um, I knew that the you know, fire department was having issues with their countertops and things like that. A lot of stuff's been left neglected, but slowly but surely we're getting back on track. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Jeremy, did you have anything you wanted to just share? Go ahead. Uh, sure. I mean, uh, you, you, I know you prepared <laughs> stuff. and. Well, uh, as far as the garage door openers go, we actually had to make an emergency purchase because all of the garage door openers that are in the station are obsolete. So we can't get parts for them anymore. So we were actually um, saving the ones that uh, had the one that had to be replaced, and we were taking parts from that one to put it on other ones to just get by. So yes, the garage door openers were definite need and um, been in need for for quite some time. And all eight doors do need to work uh, for a couple of reasons. One, those vehicles are moved throughout the station, right? If one one may break down and it can't be moved or whatever the reason is. And also, uh, as a safety aspect, we try not to back the vehicles in. The whole purpose of having drive-through bays is, is for safety and to ensure that there's no accidents uh, involving the vehicles. Uh, as far as the countertops go, the countertops, uh, well, actually one of our captains about five years ago uh, did a little fix to them to try and get us by. Um, they're rotting, they're delaminating, and they're molding, um, especially around the, the sink area. <clears throat> so through a lot of research and uh, talking to multiple contractors, they all recommended going to a granite style countertop. Granite's cost uh, has dropped by over two thirds over the last 20 years uh, due to technology and, and more uh, um, mines that became available and the, the release now of uh, quartz. Quartz is the new uh, countertop or, or material used, uh, so the demand on granite is, has decreased considerably. Um, the, so doing rough numbers, uh, to go to the, the low end uh, Formica type countertop, which is a 10 year countertop, was roughly $5,200. And that didn't include the removal of the, the demolition of the, what was the countertops that are there now. Um, and the, the granite came in at 5,800. And that's a 50 year plus countertop. So I thought being fiscally responsible, a 50 year plus countertop that we don't have to address again was the way to go. I appreciate that. You're Thank welcome. you. Any other questions? Mayor. <coughs> You're the chair to uh, Mr. Osborne. Uh, I'm sorry, but that was a false assumption that you made that Councilman Miller was the only one that availed him time to go and check with the deputy chief. I spent an hour there yesterday talking to our deputy chief. So uh, please stick to facts. Thank you. Yeah, we're, we're, we're done. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Next item. Mayor AC and Councilman, I apologize. I failed to read item 2A, the um, minutes from the regular meeting of January 15th. We do need a motion for that. I move to approve. Support. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item 3B, approve the bid award for the replacement of garage door openers at the Wayne Fire Department to be paid from the Community Development Block Grant budget. Approval subject to written contract acceptable to both the city and the vendor. Move to approve. Second. I'm not done. I'm not done. <laughs> She's got more to go. <laughs> Bitter Allied Building, Detroit, Michigan, $9,706.64. McKern McKernan, Inc., Roseville, Michigan, $11,375. All Tech Doors, Livonia, Michigan, $11,161.59. Secure Door, Mount Clements, Michigan, $16,506. And the our recommendation is Allied Building as the lowest bid. Okay. Okay. Now you can go ahead. <laughs> Move to approve. Support. Any questions? All in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Item four, appointments to boards and commissions and committees. For A, approve the appointment of Robert Borchi to the Wayne Planning Commission to fill the unexpired term of Harold Wodeski Jr. until July 2019. So moved. Support. <clears throat> Who is the maker of the motion, please? Mr. Wagner. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 4B, accept the resignation of Lori Bearer from the Parks and Trails Committee. Move to, Move approve. to approve. Support. Any questions? I supported it. I moved. Okay. Sorry, Mary, you didn't recognize me, but in regards to the, to the appointment of Mr. Borchi to the Planning Commission to fill the vacancy, were there any other applicants on file with City Hall that had expressed an interest to serve? And I'd like to congrats Mr. Borchi. I'm sure he will do a fine job. Further, in a memo to the City Manager, it was our Community Development Director, Ms. Gowen, that suggested the appointment of Mr. Borchi to the Planning Commission. Commission. This would this would have been a usual suggested appointment of the City of Wayne planner. Currently, we don't have one. Are we to assume that Ms. Going is assuming the position of City planner and or some responsibilities of City planning? The answer to that is no. She's helping out where she can. And we were very short staffed with stuff, and people are trying to work together to make those things happen. And actually, I'm the one that asked Mr. Borgi to, uh, to to fill that seat. So th th that's the, the, the correct information. Thank you. I believe you need to follow through. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 5A, uh, pardon me, 5 communications and reports. 5A, donation from the John Glenn High School, class of 1966, in the amount of $500 in memoriam for police officer Leonard Anderson. Okay. Excuse me, Madam um, Mayor Racy. Did we not skip uh, B or B? You're absolutely right, Councilman Miller. I apologize. I apologize. For B. No, no actually we, we did. We just Mr. Webster it. and, uh, and you, you actually supported that. Yeah. Oh no, they accept the resignation of Lori Bearer for the Parks yeah. and Trails Committee? Yes, we did that. Just voted on that. Okay, I apologize. So the donation from uh, John Gunn High School in memoriam for Police Officer Leonard Anderson. Okay. 5B is a letter of thanks to the Wayne Police Department from St. Mary's Outreach Center in appreciation for the donation of 200 pounds of food in December of 2018. Item 6, general items for consideration. 6A, approve a professional services agreement with Stantec, Inc. We're going to move D to the top. On the general items. Actually, I had you moved it to the beginning of the meeting, and you've already acted on that. No, the, the approve the budget amendment for 2019 dash five. D. Okay. Six. Yeah. Item D six D approve budget amendment 2019 five. Yep. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah, they're still here, so I figured we didn't do it. <laughs> Good evening. Before you, we have a budget amendment, 2019-5. Um, as you know, the budget was approved for the 1819 fiscal year. It had a $1.9 million loss associated with it. We've recently crossed over the halfway point through the year, so it's a good time to assess what the trends have been and where the if, numbers are. If I are may, going. Mayor Racy, we do need a motion before we can discuss it. Oh, sorry about that. Motion to approve. Second. Support. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so it's a good time of the year to go through and look at where the trends are and the numbers to help adjust the picture as it's a living document that keeps moving through the amendments during the year. I do have one adjustment um, that I want to note before I go through the numbers. In the general fund revenue, the rescue run decrease of $50,000 should be coming off. Um, we've, more revenue was recorded subsequent to that, and we don't feel that adjustment's necessary. 
So that will adjust um, your total revenue increase to be 111,290 instead of just 61,290. During the year, um, things happen that help us to make that picture a little bit different and change. And so what we have before you is an amendment where the loss will now be about 554,000 instead of the previously, sorry, 454,000, instead of the previous 1.9 million. We'll go through the components of what created that. So the revenue will be increased $111,290. That is due to three main things. Um, there's a J grant that was awarded that was approximately $80,000, as well as increases um, in ordinance fees and site development. The majority of the adjustment, though, really is on the expenditure side, and there's a decrease of $1,338,190. I'll go through some of the highlights of those components, and I'm going to turn over to Katie, and she's going to go through some other elements. But some of the trending information that we had to make to be part of that adjustment is you switched recently to the retiree health care stipend, so that is reducing expenditures by about $600,000 in the general fund. Also, the health care trends this year are positive. The uh, expenses are coming in lower than anticipated by approximately $400,000, which is a benefit of your self-insurance plan and the use of that plan. And then likewise, the required contribution from MERS um, is less than the previous estimates, and that's coming in about $80,000 lower. So when you take that increase to revenue of $111,000, and the proposed decrease of the 1.3 million, your net um, fund balance or in net income at the end of the year would be a loss of $554,385. So one thing to keep in mind, we still have about five months left of the fiscal year. History has showed that department heads come in approximately two to 5% under budget. If you take that $554,000 as a percent of your expenditures, it's about 2.6%. So if trends continue as they have in the past years that we've shown, it seems like the budget may end up close to that break-even point. We'll know as the next couple months come in, but that's right now where things are trending. I'm going to turn it over to Katie, who's going to go through a couple more elements of the budget amendment. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Yeah, just a couple other things. I just wanted to point out that we have two new grants that are included in this, the Justice Assistant Grants for the police to get vehicle and body cams, and also a justice assistance grants for the youth program. We have the library's budget amendment to include their one mil. Yeah, that's all I had to add. Any other questions? Mayor Racy, I was, was wondering when I was looking over the budget was, I didn't see anything about the, the sale of the fire uh, truck that we had. That was last fiscal year. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank I you. Item 6A, approve a professional services agreement with Stantec Inc. of Ann Arbor for partial design engineering services and construction engineering services for the 2019 Mildred Street Water Main Project in the amount of $96,000 funded through the Water Fund. Move to approve. Second. Any questions? Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 6B, approve a professional services agreement with Stantec Inc. of Ann Arbor to provide construction engineering services for the 2020 John Hicks Bridge Deck Replacement Project in an amount not to exceed $98,000 funded through the Major Road Fund. Move to approve. Support. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 6C, approve a 2018 slip lining project change order number two with InstaForm Technologies in the amount of $80,000, bringing the current contract cost to $3,630, um, $3,300,000, pardon me, $362,442.60. Funding for this change order will be through the water and sewer funds. 
Move to approve. Second. Any questions? Questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 6E, approve a, letter, approve a letter of understanding with the POAM, Police Officers Association of Michigan. Mr. Council. Move to approve. Second. Ryan, could you come up and tell us about this? Thank you. Uh, so as everyone is aware we don't we don't currently have a school resource officer at the Wayne Memorial High School historically we've had a full-time officer there um, due to staffing issues we're just not able to get a full-time officer there now without pulling uh, an officer from the road so a solution we came up with was to have a part-time officer there for the time being um, so we were able to negotiate with the Police Officers Association of Michigan and they've agreed to uh, to allow us to hire a part-time officer um, and we have some candidates that are in the process of getting there so hopefully we can get somebody there quickly Great. Any questions? Any questions? I, Ryan, I just wanted, could you pass along to the chief? Could you please uh, pass along to them? Thank you for uh, for everything working on this with us. Absolutely. Because yeah, you know, I know it's a big deal. They're very accommodating. Yes. It, it, it is a big deal on their end, but um, ultimately we want to keep the kids safe. Yes. No. And this is a great, great thing. I know the schools are going to be very excited about being able to have an officer. They've been wanting this for a long time, and I appreciate everything that you guys have been doing to make this happen. I will definitely pass on uh, your thanks, Mr. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Need to follow through on the motion. Anybody else? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item seven: administration reports. Through the chair yep. we have a couple of reports this evening I'm going to ask uh, Chief Ryan Strong to come up again uh, there's been a lot of uh, misunderstandings with regards to dispatch and how this is going to work moving forward and I wanted Chief uh, Strong to clear the air on that so that um, the public understands that we're not going to be left without 911 dispatch it's just that we're going through a, a transition right now and you know without further ado I'm going to let the uh, chief uh, explain where we're at at this point as you've been having conversations since Friday and we've been having conversations two years prior to that so absolutely thank you um, yes yeah, so just a bit of background so currently our dispatch services we're in a consolidated dispatch with Westland Garden City and Inkster Westland provides our dispatch services we have a contract with the city of Westland um, in order to pull out of the contract, you need to notify the other agencies before December 31st. Um, so we still have a valid contract with them at least through next summer. Um, we're considering moving to a consolidated dispatch with the city of Dearborn, um, which would save everybody a little bit of money and the services would be enhanced. Just the information sharing, better access to equipment, that type of thing. Um, the tentative plan is to move to Dearborn um, come July 1st. Um, but the bottom line is even if that doesn't work out we are not going to be left without dispatch services um, as city manager Nasserini pointed out there's been some misinformation going on um, but chief Jed Ruzik at Westland has made it very clear that um, they're not going to pull out of the dispatch services unless we all go it's, it's all or none in fact he, I believe he's going to present a resolution to his city council that um, it, it's if if they go everyone needs to go if Dearborn doesn't take us on they're not going to go either so I assure you, we are not going to be left without 911 dispatch services. One way or the other, whether we stay with Westland or whether we go with Dearborn, we're going to have dispatch services. Um, Chief, you and I also talked about, you had stated you want to just talk a little bit, yes. expound upon grants and other opportunities. Yes, thank you. Just, just reference some talk at the beginning about uh, fire versus the police department. Uh, I've been at work for the city of Wayne for 20 years, and I can tell you that particularly recently, the police department has received very strong support. I mean, I've been here for 20 years, and I've n we've never put four people through the police academy without question, with unconditional support from the mayor, the city council, and the city manager. Um, we're getting new body cameras, new in-car cameras. We're got getting new police cars. I mean, granted, we're still working on building up staffing, but the support we'll receive is tremendous. Um, there's no, there, there's no, just no question about that. Um, 
Just real, real quick too. Sorry, sure. uh, just reference the uh, donation, uh, the uh, the two kind of community items. Um, the donation from um, the John Glenn High School uh, 1968 reunion committee for $500. Um, that 1968, that was the year that uh, Leonard Anderson, um, who was killed in line of duty in 1974, that's the year he graduated. He was, graduated from Wayne Memorial High School, they needed $500 to the police department um, for equipment for us. So that's just another way that the police department receives support. So we're definitely getting strong support from all around. And um, just reference the, uh, the donation from St. Mary's. Um, the Police Officers Association of Michigan and the Command Officers Association of Michigan worked together to donate some uh, food to the uh, St. Mary's Food Bank. And uh, Sergeant Hughes was here, kind of spearheaded that. So that is all. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it. Um, Lois, I understand that you are here on behalf of the library and the museum this evening. All right, come on up. <laughs> yes, I don't have any money for you, though. Oh, darn. <laughs> well, thank you very much for, for having us. Um, we're, next Wednesday, so a week from tomorrow, uh, in the evening, we're going to have a presentation by um, a professor from the University of Detroit Mercy. It's going to be about Michigan prisoner of war camps during World War II. He's written a book, and the book is, he'll have the books for sale, but um, he's gonna be talking about what the, uh, the prisoner of war camps, where they were, what the people did, and, and the whole, I had no idea that they even were prisoner of war camps in Michigan, so I'm really excited to hear him. And the, the um, Wayne Historical Society and the Friends of the Library are partnering to bring him in. And the really added benefit to this is we're going to have refreshments. So you all come and have a, and join us and have a treat too. So I've quit giving you some flyers and I have extra little flyers here um, if anybody in the audience would like to have some before we go. Any questions? Oh, I'm sorry. It's going to be at 7 o'clock next Wednesday, um, February 13th. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Lois. Um, I just have just one more report. Uh, Nancy couldn't be here t this evening from Senior Services. I'm not going to read everything because there are flyers out in the vestibule, but she's got quite a few events coming up. A Food of France Dutch Treat Lunch on March 14th, um, uh, a trip to the historic Whitney for $69 and a stop at Powabic Pottery. Um, Diabetes Path program begins on February 20th for six weeks. It's free to anyone with two, type 2 diabetes. There's a really cool uh, trip that she's planning right now, um, and there's information, experience the Underground Railroad Living Museum at First Congregational Church in Detroit, which is coming up. There's uh, information in the hallway. And then this is kind of cool, and I'm actually interested in this myself. Um, I want to visit a life-size recreation of Noah's Ark and the, creation, uh, at, and the Creation Museum in Petersburg, Kentucky. Um, there's a trip available in May, and uh, it's for the um, Sometimes Travelers group, which you can join. Anyone 30 years and up is, uh, is welcome. It's $316 per person. And if you have any questions, please call Nancy at 734-721-7460. And again, there, it's in the Kaboom le newsletter that's out in the vestibule. And there's flyers located in, at Hype, the library, businesses throughout Wayne, and here at City Hall. So um, Nancy's got a lot going on. So uh, that'll conclude my report this evening. Thank oh, you. I didn't hear from you guys. Come on up. I'm sorry. I had asked uh, if the museum, uh, just so that sometimes if they go over there three minutes, they could be a part of the admin report. So Mr. Mills is going to be a, an addition. Yes, I have your sesquicentennial minute for February 5th. And uh, today's topic is on Ezra Derby. In 1832, Ezra Derby purchased Johnson's Tavern from the heirs of Stephen Simons and moved his wife Sally to this Michigan wilderness from their home in Massachusetts. On this property, he added a sawmill on the banks of the river, about where we stand today. He also built a blacksmith shop and a general store. With these improvements and those to the Chicago Road, settlement of the area began in earnest. Classes for children began on the second floor of the blacksmith shop, uh, but in 1833, Ezra Derby helped to build a log cabin, which was the first dedicated school in this community. In 1834, Ezra Derby was appointed Justice of the Peace. Also in 1834, he subdivided his 80 acres and platted a settlement, building the first wooden frame home on the north side of the avenue, the site of which is now called Derby's Alley. Early maps of this settlement identify it as Derby's Corners or simply Derby's. Unfortunately, also in 1834, his wife Sally died. 
So Ezra dedicated the westernmost hill lot for her burial and that for other residents. Thus, Derby's burial ground was established. Many of his lots on the south side of the Chicago Road were sold to Rufus Brown and Colonel Joshua Howard, the first commander of the Federal Army, Armory in Dearborn, who had served under General Mad Anthony Wayne in the War of 1812. Now they platted the land into 169 lots and streets surrounding a public or town square, which they called Wayne after their beloved general. Now Ezra Derby married four more times, with all but one wife buried in the Derby family plot. He had one son and two stepsons serve in the Civil War. His stepsons survived and were ultimately buried in the family plot after their death. His son Ezra, however, Ezra Derby Jr., was killed in the Battle of Petersburg on June 18, 1864, and is buried elsewhere. Now, after living for a while in Canton and Farmington, Ezra Derby returned to uh, this community in 1871 when he purchased the house, which is still standing, at the southeast corner of Norris and Third Street. Uh, he lived there until his death in 1877 at the age of 74. Uh, Ezra Derby was buried with his wife's stepsons in the family plot in the cemetery which we know as the Old Wayne Michigan Avenue Cemetery. Thank you. Thank you. That'll conclude my report. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Citizens' comments or requests on items not on the agenda. <coughs> Citizens are to limit their comments or requests to three minutes. The City Council asks that if you do have a question or concern, to bring it to the attention of the appropriate departments whenever possible. If you feel the matter has not been resolved satisfactorily, you, may, you are encouraged to bring it to the attention of the City Manager and, if still not resolved satisfactorily, to the Mayor and City Council. The Mayor and City Council and the Department Heads may not respond to the questions at the meeting, but will respond by the next City Council meeting or as soon as possible, once they have looked into the matter. Mr. Gochi. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, as most of you know me, my name is John Gochi. I'm with uh, John Gochi Realty uh, here tonight. I have a program uh, that I'm hosting tomorrow at the US 12 Bar and Grill. It's on the Mishta Step Forward Down Payment Assistance, which is an amazing program that uh, helps first-time homeowners purchase a home. Uh, it's $15,000 in an interest-free loan to purchase a home in 61 communities. Wayne is one of them. And the best thing about it is the loan goes away after five years of ownership. It's forgiven at a rate of 20% a year. So we were having an informational seminar with an approved Mishta lender that will be there at the location that will answer any question and uh, maybe even you know have some applicants apply and, and give them the necessary tools to take advantage of this program. It's a first come first serve uh, program. There's five million dollars left in the program. Uh, it started out with uh, 20 million dollars in December of 2018. Uh, I'm sorry, October. By December it got diluted to about five million dollars because it was overwhelming demand and they added another $5 million to it, and there's currently, I believe, $6 million in the program. Uh, Wayne is one of the 61 communities that uh, can uh, take advantage of this program, so the people really only need 1% of the actual home purchase price to get a house. It's cheaper to get a house right now with this program than it is to rent an apartment. It's cheaper to move into your own home, and your rent's cheaper. And it, I felt the duty to come out, not only is it my business, but I felt the duty to come out and make sure people knew about this program because a lot of people don't know, they're not aware. And uh, you know, and it's a great time to be a seller. If you're thinking of selling your house in Wayne, you got a lot of people out there that uh, you know, uh, have this additional money to get it. And this is a, a grant from the federal government that is given in conjunction with the MISHTA loan. And it was uh, designated for communities that got hit hard by a high foreclosure rate or the mortgage crisis. So it's to help bring home ownership back in the community to make them stakeholders. Because we all know that if somebody has a piece of the American dream, they're going to put their life and soul in that. And uh, tomorrow night at US 12, right around the block, 6.30, we'll have some refreshments and appetizers. 
and the meeting will begin at 7, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get some people in Wayne on a path to home ownership. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Blackwell? Thank you. On the city website, we publish city council meeting agendas and minutes. I am looking for the minutes for the January 8th and 15th, 2019 meeting. They are not available on the city website. What is the policy regarding publishing council minutes if there is one? Is it possible that these minutes from these two meetings are available at City Hall in a hard copy? Is it just a common courtesy for council meeting minutes to be published to the city website within a reasonable time. Mayor, I um, respectfully ask that the clock be stopped because it wasn't running when the previous speaker was standing at the podium. Uh, additionally, on the city website, there are no council meeting minutes posted for the November 20th and December 4th, 2018 regular council meetings. I would like copies of both of these council minutes as soon as possible. Can you suggest how I might obtain them? And please, please don't suggest that I have to do a FOIA request. Secondly, when are the old sodium base street lights on Wayne Road south of Michigan Avenue East going to be replaced? with the new LED bulbs. I noticed there's a couple here and there in the spots that um, are there, but it's not, there's no continuity down Wayne Road. Uh, and a question, can community development block grant funds be used for that project? And earlier, Ms. Gowen, I heard something about um, in regards to public hearings regarding the community development block grant funds. Will it be, I know she said it's going to be Wayne County that's going to be, I guess, taking over the reins for that. Um, is it going to be for all citizens in the county or in specific cities at specific locations? And I'd like to leave you with this, since February is Black History Month, in honor of Black History Month, I'd like to leave you with this quote by the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. There comes a time when one must take a position that is neither safe nor politic nor popular, but he must take it because his conscience tells him it is right. Thank you. Mr. Shelton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Council. Uh, my name is Stan Shelton. I am presently the uh, president of the Wayne Chamber of Commerce. And I just thought I would uh, come tonight and uh, uh, introduce myself and to let um, everyone know that maybe forgot that the chamber is here in Wayne. And my vision is to make the chamber great again so that we can help make the great city of Wayne even greater. So I started to introduce myself and that uh, we, we still have some challenges, but uh, we are trying to overcome those. Uh, one, of the, um, one of the things that I'm doing right now <coughs> is the, the members that we have presently in the chamber, I am visiting those members uh, to get their uh, response to the chamber, uh, what we can do to help them, and what they can do to help the chamber. So we're trying to make an impact with the chamber and also raise the visibility of the chamber. So uh, we're asking for volunteers uh, and any suggestions of what um, we can do to make the chamber great again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Osborne. Osborne, the city of Wayne. 
I have a follow-up comment to the question to what I asked at the last council meeting regarding the mayor receiving no-bid contracts from the city of Wayne under Jonah Graphics, Wayne Dispatch, etc. Question, does the mayor, John Rasa, intend to continue with this past practice and does council intend to support this ongoing practice of no-bid contracts by the current mayor? I await your answer. Okay, anybody else? You're finished. Uh, I as I I started this. I have a follow-up comment to what I asked last things, and it's it stated that you will uh, answer the question, try and get back to us as soon as possible. Mr. Mr. Osborne, this question has been answered numerous times. There is no more answers to that question. I didn't hear. There an is answer. no there is no no big contracts that doesn't exist. It's a made up thing. Pardon? It just needs to stop. This is an attack on me and my my business. It needs to stop. There's no more. There's no more dialogue. We're done. It's there, over. There's no. There's no attack, sir. Well, you even bringing this up because it's been brought up multiple I have the, times. I, I have the right to bring it it's up. It's been sir, brought sir. up by you before. It's just a. But it's not being answered. There is no answer because it doesn't happen. There is no no bid contracts. Okay. So that is the statement. There is no no bid contracts. Okay. I've addressed it with the entire council in the past. The I'm here. I'm the citizen. I'm the one talking. I understand you that. the council today, and I'm and talking to you right now. And I'm not even supposed to be having a conversation with you at this moment. So I'm. I, you're, no, you're, you're lucky you're, that I'm I, even it, talking. It, to says, you. it says that I'm supposed to bring. I'm supposed to make a question at this podium, and of which time you will get back to me and give me an answer. And I didn't hear any answer come from the city clerk. Because there's really no answer to that because it's already been addressed. There is no no bid contracts, so I don't know. We don't know what you're talking about. I do know what I'm talking about. I asked a question, so that that nullifies it. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Clareman. Hi. Um, last Thursday there was a carbon monoxide poisoning over at Hickory Hollow. That was in the morning. The victim had a carbon monoxide detector, which eventually went off. They're taken to the ER, treated there, released. They were fine eventually. Friday evening, two more people had carbon monoxide poisoning there. A lot of off-duty police and firefighters went out there and knocked door or knocked on each door, tested the carbon monoxide levels. Twenty-seven of the two hundred and sixty-seven units were found to have elevated levels. Those people left their units for the night. They were fine. The two people who were in the first unit that was called on. One died on the scene, the other one died earlier today. Um, at this point, it doesn't really look like Hickory Hollow has done anything to address the situation. None of the 27 units that were found have elevated levels had carbon monoxide detectors that went off. The only reason the elevated levels were found was because the police went door to door and the firefighters. Um, at this point, we've got an ordinance which says rental properties have to be inspected every three years. A few of the things that are on that ordinance say that there have to be working carbon monoxide detectors in each unit. The venting for the furnaces and water heaters has to be inspected and certified by a heating professional. I don't know if at Hickory Hollow that just hasn't been done or if each of those points was missed. I suspect it was they didn't get the inspection. Um, at this point, I'd like to make sure something is done to make sure this doesn't happen there in the future. Rather, so we're doing this proactively rather than reactively. And I put a poll out on Facebook yesterday asking renters and Wayne, not just at Hickory Hollow, if the rentals had carbon monoxide detectors. More than one third said they did not. They only had smoke detectors. Um, it's an ordinance that they do, so I'd like to see if there's anything we can do going forward to make sure that more rentals actually have these. So we don't have any more deaths because of this. Okay. Um, that's all I have on that. I've got a minute left. Um, there was a meeting at the library today about Qantas Park and the developers' plans for that. There's a follow up meeting to that tomorrow for JC Park. Anybody who's interested, the meeting is at 6 30 to roughly 8 o'clock. The developer had quite a few good points and addressed quite a few questions. So if you're interested, show up. That's it. Okay, thank you. Kathy. Uh, Kathy Rockwell Wayne. I'd like to thank Mr. Biden for taking care of the um, signs that I 
of him that was laying alongside the road. He had it taken care of the very next day after the meeting. And also Ed Cohen took care of the uh, gates that was falling on the barrels on Michigan Avenue. I'd like to thank both of them for doing that. And I was going through, uh, was on the weekend, I don't know if it's been changed or not, on the local channel, you know, where you advertise. And uh, I seen the, I don't know who's responsible for changing the dates or the times or whatever, but I seen it says dog license for 2018. Uh, you have to pay by February 2018. It still's got 2018 on it rather than 2019, if that could be taken care of. And then also the Golden Hour Club, and I didn't mention it at Nancy's meeting at, on that board that I'm on. She also has the bingo uh, every two month, every two weeks or whatever, and that's been canceled for like three months or more. They're, they, we no longer do that. And who takes care of putting things on or taking that off, or who's responsible for that? The, the IT person. <laughs> you you're responsible. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very I much. I am now. You am now. Okay. You are now. Oscar. Good evening, Mayor and City Council and citizens of Wayne. A um, quick little update from Congresswoman uh, Rashida Tlaib's office. Um, I don't know if this information is a little low, but I'll just repeat it just in case. The Congresswoman was um, assigned to uh, the Committee on Oversight and Reform and also on the Financial Services Committee. Those are two the, the two committees that she'll be assigned to. Um, and then a quick little legislative update. Now that we got these, it's kind of exciting for me to tell everyone because get to show how we're working. Uh, she's co-sponsored um, two bills. One's the Shares Shareholders United Act, um, and that one would prevent corporate expenditures for campaign purposes unless the corporation has established a process for determining the political will of its majority shareholders. So corporations can't just spend that shareholder money without the actual shareholders um, finding out where the money's actually going. And the second one that she's co-sponsored is the American Family Act. Um, there's two parts of this one. The first one creates a new young child tax of $300 per month, 3600 3, per year, uh, up to 1000 per year uh, for children under the age of six. Uh, and then the other part is it expands the minimum child tax uh, to 250 per month, 3000 per year, up from 1000 the year before. Uh, for kids uh, the ages of six uh, and older, up to the age of 19. And that's all I have for any legislative updates. And if any of uh, the citizens have any concerns, please, by all means, just approach me after. Credit. Yes. <laughs> yes, credit. And if there's any issues, please, I'll be in the back and please come find me. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Ms. Brock. Good afternoon, Bernadette Brock, right here in Wayne. Um, first off, I want to thank Jody um, for coming back to the library. My son and I went the other day, and for a nine-year-old to notice the energy difference in our library is amazing. He said, Mom, that lady never smiles, and she's smiling. So that she must be doing something right there. And for me to say something positive these days about the library is a plus. Um, but for him to notice that the entire atmosphere in there has changed is amazing because most kids don't notice people's personalities but he called them out to me look she's smiling look she's laughing look she's she's showing me where this book is where before he hated to go because he felt like everybody was down so i want to thank you jody for revitalizing our library to my friends at the fire department if your mattresses are lumpy Please let me know, and I will run another fundraiser for you. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay, go ahead and move the agenda. Item eight, items for next agenda. Item nine, consent calendar, 9A, Housing Commission minutes of December 12th, 2018. Wish a council. Moves with us, with the exception. Can I have support? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Mm. Comments from members of the City Council. Okay. Uh, Councilman Miller. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mayor Racy. 
Uh, first of all, I want to thank um, this past few weeks we've had some uh, extremes in our temperatures and weather here. And I want to thank the DPW and our first responders for all the efforts and in being able to protect and, um, and, and serve this community. Uh, in, in that regards, uh, we are expecting a severe ice storm uh, coming up here uh, later this evening and into tomorrow. I would urge everyone to uh, park their vehicles off the streets and to help um, to minimize for yourselves any uh, dents from other vehicles trying to get down your streets. Um, also, I want to point out is that um, the Dairy Queen is opening up in five days. Spring is just around the corner. So um, just like our weather, things do swing. And um, also, my condolences to the family, the Fleming family, uh, at the uh, tragedy at uh, Hickory Hollow. It, it is extremely unfortunate. And uh, really, I, I went to Home Depot today and uh, bought myself a, um, a detector, and they're only like $20. I mean, uh, we've got to get the message out about to try to help prevent further um, unnecessary deaths like this. Uh, this young woman is now uh, left without parents, and it's very heartbreaking. And regardless of who it is, it's just, you know, it's, it's very heartbreaking, period. Um, lastly, you know, I just want to just to, as we continue to commemorate Black History Month in Wayne, um, I have a quote that I'd like to share as well. 99% um, of the failures come from people who have the habit of making excuses. And that came from George Washington Carver. He was a very famous um, uh, black American uh, agricultural chemist uh, in, the, um, in this past um, century. And with that, I will pass. Thank you. Councilman Dowd. <clears throat> Just want to start by echoing what Councilman Miller said. Uh, a big thank you to our services, our Wayne services, for the extra efforts and the extra endurance through some terrible weather and some terrible times these last few weeks. We truly appreciate you. Uh, I was asked by a resident to mention uh, Stottlemeyer, Stottlemeyer Early Childhood Development Center, uh, specifically the Head Start program. Uh, they are certainly there to support. They have a, a multitude of services. Uh, my granddaughter and also my daughter and son actually went to the Head Start program right there many, many years ago. Uh, anyways, you can call 734-419-2636. And lastly, I noticed that uh, actually on the Chamber website that uh, Knights of Columbus has got a, uh, an event coming up. Uh, country, I believe. Country dinner and music on February 23rd. Certainly it's open to the public. Uh, I have been to some before. And uh, thanks to our uh, Facebook page through the chamber, I, I caught that. And with that, I'll pass. Okay. Councilman Wagner. Thank you. Um, this past week or the week before, um, Kevin and I attended the uh, newly elected officials training at the Michigan Municipal League. It was very informative. We learned a lot about the Open Meetings Act and uh, about proper and improper communication. Um, I also, uh, just today before this meeting, I attended the uh, meeting on the sales of the Qantas Park, as uh, Eric spoke of. Um, the developer, Mr. Schaefer, showed us some proposed designs, and I am going to try to get those from him so I can put it up on my Facebook page so that everybody can uh, look at them and uh, see what they think. The biggest thing we want to tell everybody is the park has not been sold and no designs have been approved. So everything is in the planning stages right now. So if you uh, want to voice your opinions on that, you should do so. There's going to be another meeting on that tomorrow, as, as uh, Eric already mentioned. Um, they're going to focus on J.C. Park tomorrow, and um, he'll again probably have the same presentation to show you. So if you uh, want to go to that meeting to get more information, that would be great. Um, also, the uh, uh, the Wayne Historic Society did not get that grant. Uh, some of you may have uh, noticed on Facebook uh, they got beat out at like the last hour I think uh, another group beat them out but they've been nominated again so let's keep voting for them um, and uh, finally uh, Tony stole it from me but yeah Dairy Queen is opening uh, soon so uh, I think that's a prediction of warmer weather coming that'll pass okay. Councilman Webster um, 
just want to remind everyone uh, the Parks and Trails Committee is still uh, working diligently and we do have a meeting coming up on the 12th at 6 p.m. and be here at City Hall so if you'd like to attend and see what we're doing uh, we will be here and uh, you know everyone's kind of touched on it so far but uh, to the police and fire what you guys did the other night how you came together was fantastic getting through all 267 homes in a short amount of time making sure all those people are safe and kind of giving them peace of mind I know that they definitely appreciate that so thank you for being out there and doing what you guys needed to do uh, with that I'll pass Skiff. Uh, yes, and I just wanted to echo what you've already heard as well. I wanted to thank our first responders. Um, one thing that was mentioned is um, you can say, yes, that's their job and their responsibility to do that. But um, one thing people don't realize is um, the things that you see when you go on these calls, the images and the things, the tragedies that occurs, they don't go away. They stay with them. So I just want to say I appreciate you and I thank you and um, thank you for your excellence in that situation this weekend. Um, I also wanted to congratulate Bob Bourget for his um, appointment to the Planning Commission. I believe that uh, he's going to do an excellent job and I look forward to um, the work that he will do in the future. And then one other thing, I did post it on my Facebook page. Um, there is a daddy-daughter dance um, this Friday on the 8th from 6 to 8 p.m. It's $25 per couple, seven for any additional daughter that you might have that you want to bring. Um, it starts, oh, did I already say from 6 to 8 p.m.? I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. It's from 6 to 8 p.m., and if you'd like more information, the telephone number is 734-721-7400. Thank you. <coughs> Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just echo what everybody else said about the police fire. The DPW did a fantastic job. Uh, while we're talking about the police and fire and, and, and the carbon monoxide problem, you realize that they had two other emergencies at the very same time. So the amount of, the amount of dedication and work that our police and our fire department put into this is just outstanding. I, I, I just want to gush over it. It, it. it was fantastic. Thank you. Uh, that's it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I have a few things. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about real quick, uh, it was mentioned about dispatch with Dearborn, and I just want to assure people too, I mean, this has been going on for a long time. Myself and Councilman Wagner actually, actually have already toured the facility out in Dearborn. Um, if they weren't talking to us, we wouldn't be at their facility. So, um, it, it, it is it's it's really a, a really nice place and I'm, I hope that everything works out like, like the, we believe it will and it will save us money and uh, it, it's definitely a, a very positive thing I don't know if people recall but when I first started on council we were doing just Garden City and Wayne and I was at the police station one day and somebody called in a 911 call and they were in Westland and it was bouncing over to our our 911 and they had to call again to try to hit the, the uh, 911 in Westland. What we're doing is so much safer for our residents and uh, we are looking for the future and this is I think this is a great thing for everybody involved in that so I just wanted to mention that. Um, I also wanted to mention that uh, at the end of the month uh, our state rep Kevin Coleman our state senator uh, Dana Polhanke is going to be having a coffee. Uh, it has been moved to Karma Coffee. It's on the 28th. It was uh, previously scheduled at uh, Tim Hortons, but it has been moved to Karma Coffee. So just so people know that um, the uh, of the new t the new place that it's going to be. I believe it's at six o'clock also. And uh, I also wanted to mention that um, I've had a, had the pleasure of being able to uh, sit down with uh, our state senator uh, Dana Polhanke, uh just recently with the, the city manager. We've already started dialogue, working together. Uh, we're looking forward to, uh, in the next week or so, uh, meeting with Congresswoman Tlaib. She's uh, assured me she wants to come out. We talked, uh, we went, I went to a, uh, uh, a luncheon last week that she, that she was hosting, and uh, she's going to come out and talk to us, um, which I'm really excited that we're going to have some dialogue. Um, I don't know if people realize how we haven't had representation in the suburbs in a long, long time, and I'm looking forward to her uh, to, to working with her, and uh, and hope that uh, we can uh, solve some of these uh, issues that we've been having, and uh, and uh, 
and I'm very encouraged that she's making an effort to want to talk to us. So if you could pass that along, I'd appreciate that. Um, and then uh, the uh, the last thing I, I, I just wanted to, to, to briefly say something. We had a really rough week with, with all the snow and uh, the cold temperatures and everything. And uh, our police, fire, and our DPW, I mean, when you have... 45 below and you have to go and work on a water main just think about that the dedication that these guys are doing and then for our fire department and police department going out the other night and and what they had to do um we we have an outstanding department and departments i guess i could say this but it would be better to say and i just hope people realize what great uh, men and women we have working for us and in, in, in the near future i know it'll come out I mean, the lives that were saved by our our firefighters that night and police is just amazing. So I just want to thank them if that can be passed along. I know we'll probably talk about this more in the future. I know that there's still things pending on everything. But uh, what, what they did the other night was outstanding. It could have been a much worse tragedy. And uh, thank you for what, what you guys do every day for us. With that, I, if I can entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to. Support. Second. Support. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried.